Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So ever since budget 2025 was proposed, the major highlight especially for students who are doing research or who are planning to come in research that was announcement of 10,000 PMRF fellowships for the next five years and this is what we are calling as PMRF 2.0 because from the last PMRF announcement which was made it was like it was not made any changes till now okay there were no changes and uh, PMRF 1.0 was uh, being implemented and from the past two years there is no recruitment of new PMRF okay in case if you are already in research you must be aware about it that new PMRFs are not uh, are not included or they are not selected in last two years so the idea of this particular video is to talk about what are the things that you can expect in this PMRF 2.0 what could be the eligibility uh, in case if you are not at all aware about what PMRF exactly is so PMRF is a fellowship scheme which government of India provides to uh, premium institutes uh, which includes top IITs which includes IASC Bangalore it also includes some ISERs, NITs and some institute of eminence also okay so some institutes are there you can go to the website and you can watch or you can read about it but I have made a detailed video on that so students who are doing research in these institutes or those who have qualified from these institutes and want to pursue their career in research they are given a certain amount of fellowship which is 70,000 for the first two years in the third year it becomes 75,000 and for the next two years it becomes 80,000 per month as of what it was implemented in PMRA 1.0 okay this is a very good amount of fellowship uh, if you say in India this is the highest amount of fellowship which you can get during your research and that attracted a lot of students toward, uh, towards pursuing their career in higher education and the idea behind this PMRF was to control this brain drain so that students do not go to uh, like foreign countries and they stay in India pursue their higher education over, the, over here and get this handsome stipend during their uh, like during their PhD. So we will be talking about PMRF 2.0. So, since the announcement which has been made by uh, our finance minister, it was said that they are going to give 10,000 new PMRF in the next five years, which makes an average of 2,000 PMRF per year. And if you know, PMRF is given twice a year, which is in the month of January, February and in the month of June, July. So, that means that per session, you are going to have around 1,000 PMRF, which means that number of PMRF candidates are going to be increased. Earlier, it was around 500 or 600 per uh, like per cycle. This time, it is almost double according to what number has been proposed. So, we can e easily expect that the number of PMRF candidates are going to increase. We can also assume here, now there is no official announcement of it. There is no official uh, like notification or anything concrete which has been posted from Government of India till now. But we can assume that new institutes could have been added because in the past four or five years, a lot of things has been changed, especially in the uh, how the research is being carried out in India. There are a lot of institutes which have started performing better. So it could happen that new institutes can be added and that will benefit research scholars, of course. So we have to wait for that and we have to see that what is going to be the final list of institutes and what is going to be the final number of candidates per cycle that they are going to choose. Okay. So this is one thing which is going to happen certainly in the next few years and when we can expect this PMRF 2.0 to be implemented, it could be from the next semester. Okay, So because it has been proposed in the month of February or uh, in the month of January, February. So basically the next semester will start from June, July. So we can expect it uh, to be implemented from that as early as possible because on, in the ongoing session, it's not going to happen. Okay. So it could happen from the next session which is from June July and if it has to be implemented in June July you can expect a detailed notice about it uh, in the month of April or May okay so let's wait for that and anything which comes related to that I'll try to upload it here on the channel and I'll try to explain you in detail okay so please subscribe to the channel if you want to stay connected with research related content now talking about that who are going to be eligible for that so all the eligibility criteria I don't think that there could be any change in the eligibility criteria because that was already set the uh, cutoff uh, related to the CGPA and the other conditions which I have already explained in my previous video so I'm not going to repeat that I would highly recommend you to watch the video but I, I believe that that is not going to be changed but yeah there is one thing which could have been done is that the last two years uh, where, where the PMRF were not selected and those students who have taken admission in last two years 
in these institutes which were expecting PMRF to be like which were expecting or they were good candidate for PMRF. Uh, they might have good CGPA and good uh, publication record. So, it could happen that uh, the government also provides uh, like opportunity to those students in the last two years which have, were not able to participate or there were no provision for PMR for them. It could happen that government can give a provision for them to be included in this eligibility criteria. So, let us wait for that. Let us wait for the final uh, eligibility criteria what they decide. But for the ongoing eligibility criteria, I do not think there will be much change that will happen. That is my personal opinion. If anything changes, I will let you know of course. Okay. The next most important thing which I have heard a lot on LinkedIn, on different uh, platform, people are discussing about it that the stipend is going to be increased. The stipend which was all uh, like earlier it was 70,000 in the first two years, 75 and then 80,000. Now it is going to go till 1 lakh, okay, uh, which is quite possible. It could happen that the government is going to implement because the budget which, which is proposed for uh, research has been increased. So it could happen that uh, the fellowship amount could could be increased and let us wait for that. But if the fellowship amount is increased to 1 lakh, that is going to be something which will be very good, like very interesting to look upon because then it will be very comparable or in some places it will be even higher than the uh, salary of assistant professor. So, it will be very like interesting to look upon this uh, scenario how government is going to implement it or whether the fellowship is going to remain same. Now, it will be also very interesting to see that how this is going to be implemented on the ground level and how this is going to affect the uh, lab, uh, you know, lab environment. So, there is a certain kind of friction which is observed especially from a person who is getting, let us say, non-net fellowship who is just getting 8,000 or 10,000 per month than a person who is JRF. So, a person who is JRF, he has qualified exam and he has uh, like uh, qualified a particular exam and he is getting a certain amount of fellowship. Then that fellowship is around 35 or 37,000. Now, a person who is PMRF is getting almost double of that. Okay, And uh, the criteria is still like that is not the criteria to apply or the criteria to be selected for PMRF, it is not that transparent. It is still goes in layers. You have to apply for it. Then you have your own uh, like uh, uh, committee of your own department, then you have your own committee of your institute and that selects that forwards your name and this is how it goes. But there is no uh, like uh, absolute way of uh, judging the people who have applied for PMRF. So, that makes it very difficult to because it's it becomes subjective, right? And wherever the concept of subjective analysis comes, there will be always uh, uh, friction among students or among uh, research scholars that uh, like why that person is capable or, or why he is getting a PMRF uh, when he is doing the same work in the same lab in the same in, uh, environment and giving similar amount of time still he is getting around two times than me. So, that is that is that will be very interesting to see how it goes in the coming years and what government does with the criteria if it tries to make it more transparent it will be definitely very good for a student it will be uh, good for the person who is getting PMRF also because then uh, that person will have uh, that thing in his mind that yes, I have completed these criteria and that is why uh, I have got this. Okay, So, let us look upon it. It will be very interesting to see. Okay, What are your thoughts about it? Please do let me know in the comment section below. I am very unbiased about it because when I was doing research, there was no PMRF. So, I have no uh, like opinion on this uh, particular thing. But yeah, definitely it, it affects in, in a lab because there are people who are working in the lab and I have read a lot of uh, like uh, post especially on LinkedIn where even professors uh, are posting about it that they have seen this thing in their lab that student have now started having that uh, you know friction among them. So, let us see how it goes. All right. So, these were certain major points regarding PMRF 2.2. What are your thoughts about it? Do let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any specific question, you can ask me out in the comment section below and uh, watch out uh, the video for PMRF 1.0 if you have not, if you are not aware about it. Okay, that is already on my another channel, but uh, I'll try to re-upload it on this particular channel. All right, so that's it from my side for this particular video. Take care. See you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.